Philippine Central Bank Governor Nestor Espanilla kept rates unchanged at his debut policy meeting while raising the country's inflation outlook. He joins us on the line from Manila. Governor, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, what prompted you to keep rates on hold and what was your first meeting like? Well, first of all, uh, with respect to the Monetary Board decision, Rish and Heidi, uh, basically in our assessment, inflation conditions in the Philippines uh, remain quite benign and uh, also uh, domestic demand was quite firm. So on the basis of that assessment, um, the Monetary Board felt that it is um, appropriate to keep monetary policy settings where they are. And uh, you also asked about how was my first uh, board meeting. It was pretty smooth, actually, and if I may say so, it was uh, rather business as usual. Right. Well, one of the things which must have actually been on your mind when you were setting rates uh, was the level of the peso. Well, this morning, we've just we're very near to 11-year lows uh, for the peso. Is that bothering you? Well, basically, the the BSP is following a, a flexible exchange rate policy. We, we, we let the exchange rate uh, be determined by market conditions. Uh, we are comfortable that economic fundamentals are all right and that uh, the exchange rate will remain within manageable levels. Uh, the exchange rate factor as well as these tax reform plans, they seem to be giving some upward pressure on the inflation outlook. What is your outlook and does that give you sort of some, I guess, thought to perhaps be in more of a hurry to tighten? Well, uh, with respect to the outlook, uh, we increased slightly our projections and that's largely because of uh, projected increases in the oil price assumptions in our uh, forecast. But Nonetheless, the revised outlook is still uh, very close to the midpoint of our target range of 3% plus minus uh, 1. Now, uh, you, you spoke about exchange rate uh, movements. Uh, the movement of the exchange rate have been relatively uh, modest. And based on our uh, recent experience, the pass-through of uh, exchange rate depreciation has been very muted to pass through relative to inflation, and that's because of uh, changes in the economic uh, structure. Uh, regarding the tax uh, reform, that is still uh, under discussion in Congress, and um, we are hopeful that it will pass, and when it passes, our expectation is that uh, its impact on projected inflation, mostly in next year, would be relatively minimal, perhaps in the uh, half percentage point range, and, but still well within our inflation target. And we don't expect that to persist. We, in fact, we expect that to, to dampen by uh, 2019. Governor, what about some of these uh, concerns that there's systemic risks building in the economy because of the growth of credit? That's expanding at roughly twice the pace of nominal GDP growth. Is that something that puts pressure on you to potentially cut sooner rather than, or rather hike sooner rather than later? We are, uh, we are closely monitoring uh, credit conditions. Uh, I think uh, our starting point ought to be the, uh, the level of credit in the Philippines is relatively low uh, compared to the region. If you look at it from a credit to GDP uh, standpoint, uh, and the Philippines is uh, one of the fastest growing uh, economies right now, but the growth is uh, well within our uh, out growth, poten growth potential. So right now uh, we are not seeing signs of uh, overheating. And at the micro level, uh, Although credit is growing, banks and non-performing loans continue to stay at rather historic lows. So from our perspective, uh, the growth conditions and the growth of credit remain within uh, manageable uh, levels. At the same time, uh, we continue to uh, look at certain sections of the market, for example, real estate, and for that we have deployed macroprudential measures to keep things under control. Uh, Governor. A, what's your bias and how do you actually wean the Philippines off this reliance on remittances from overseas workers? I think 
we we have to look at it from a broader perspective. These things are uh, solved over a medium-term horizon. The the trust of the government is to widen the economic base, and this is being driven by uh, a build-up in investments, particularly in infrastructure. We're we're trying to attract more foreign direct investments across a broader segment of our economy to generate jobs uh, locally. And this is actually the ultimate uh, driver for uh, attracting more of the labor uh, into the economy uh, rather than relying on uh, remittances. But nonetheless, remittances continue to be a major contributor to the Philippine economy and the balance of payments. And Governor, you know, if it be the case that inflation stay pretty much subdued and under control, do you think the next 12 months or so would be a good window to cut the reserve requirement? We're, 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 we're actually always uh, looking at our options on this, um, Heidi, and uh, we are framing this decision. We look at this as a basic reform in the way we conduct monetary policy towards more market-oriented means. And the driver for that is uh, uh, the stability of the inflation outlook, as well as certain uh, financial sector reforms that we are trying to introduce as well. So we are looking at this from a uh, medium-term perspective. But definitely, we would like to see a phased exit out of a high reserve requirement regime, which has been, which in a way is uh, differentiates the country from the rest of the region. We'd like to do something about that.